So you want or you need a printer that does high quality, high volume printing, and you want it at a good price. You don't want to have to pay $5 per each 4x6. What should you get? Well, this is the Epson D1070 printer. I finally got this printer after three years of waiting back in March of 2023. I've had it for just about a year and I thought I would do a review on it. The good, the bad, the ugly, and so on and so forth about this printer. So first of all, who am I? Why am I doing this? And what's this place? Well, my name is Mike Patterson. and I'm a professional full-time photographer located here in South Dakota, Canada. I've been doing this for over 39 years. Not only do I do photography, but I also own a full service photo lab. And this is one of my print rooms. And I have a lot of printers. I admit I have a ton of printers, but I did not have a printer that did exactly what I wanted when it came to volume, price, and quality. Now I've got printers all around here. I have behind me, there's a 3880 that's been here for years, it does fine artwork. It's a beautiful printer, but it's not that quick. And it's, well, it's getting up there in age. Over this way, I have some P800s. Great printers, I do some fine artwork on them, I do luster work, I do so on and so forth on them. Again, but they're not the fastest, and the price of ink is a little bit higher. Behind the camera, I have some wide format printers. Again, they have their purpose. They, they do what they want, what they're designed to do, but they're not a high volume, low cost printer. The D1070 was exactly what I was looking for. It was a printer that was capable of doing up to 400 prints an hour at a lower price point. So that comes with bulk inks so that you don't have to buy little cartridges. You buy actually bags of ink. And well, it was a price point that buying the machine was worth it. So after having it on order for over three years, I finally got it in March of 2023. I was so excited. The printer arrived, some paper arrived. I brought it in here, I got it going. I went to put the ink in it and my first issue with the printer is it doesn't come with any ink. So stop where you're at and do some calculating. Now, all these numbers are round up. All these numbers are Canadian, just because make it easy. To buy the printer, you're looking at Canadian $3,300 as of today, February, 2024. And again, I'm rounding all the numbers up and averaging them out between different suppliers. So $3,300 for the printer. Couple rolls of paper, 200 bucks. Now, right there, you're at $3,500. It takes six inks. So you need to buy six inks and they're around $75 each. So right there, you're looking at another 500 bucks. So you're at right now, $4,000 for this printer to get it, to get it installed and to do your first print. It's not cheap. It's not designed for it to be a consumer printer. It's designed to be a professional photo lab printer that does a high volume and does it at a low price and good quality. Now, when I got the ink after waiting for another week, I got it installed, did some test prints, and it blew me away. The quality is really good. In fact, I did test prints on P800s and I compared it to this printer. I did test prints on some of the wide formats. I did test prints on the 3880. I did matte, I did gloss, I, I did luster, I did everything. And I was really impressed with it. It did a really good job. But after running it for a few months, actually, I think it was March, April, May, June, July, August, around September or October, I noticed it had an issue. And the issue was the, something didn't look right in certain prints. So to compensate for that, I increased the quality from standard up to the highest setting and ran it there. Everything looked great. Everything looked fantastic. Everything was fabulous. But I noticed the issue would still occur every once in a while. Didn't happen much, didn't happen on every order. Maybe out of every 100 orders, maybe one. It, and it had to be in specific situations, specific lighting. I got to know what to look for. And in that case, I would just run them off on a P800. And so in the new year, when things slowed down, I contacted Epson and that was my second complaint. This printer has zero Epson technical support. Nobody knows about it and they are horrible. After eight phone calls and only one return phone call from Epson, they finally sent me out a replacement printer that arrived as a brick. It wouldn't work. 
and I ended up having to figure out how to fix the printer myself. Now, I was bored one day. I went through, I did some settings, I did some adjustments, and I did a complete reset up of this printer, and I found the problem. And what the problem was, was when I had installed it, I, you do a whole bunch of setups, head alignment, feed adjustment, and one of the updates of the firmware reset that back to zero, what it was when it came from the factory. And it had to be reset up but it didn't tell you that this firmware was going to reset it. In fact, Epson was able to duplicate the problem in one of their test facilities, and they didn't know how to fix it until I contacted them and said, I think I found a solution, and they verified, yep, that was the problem. So their technical support is horrible for it. But don't get me wrong, if, if it runs, if I don't have issues with it, this printer is a game changer for a small photo lab or even a larger photo lab that needs help in a certain area. Now, I've been a tech as well. I worked on Fuji mini labs for years. I know the mini lab industry inside and out, and I know how they work. I know how they're designed, so on and so forth. So to set this up for me was a piece of cake. When it was set up, when it was running, it's, it was just amazing. And I've currently got it running at doing the 400 prints an hour that it says it's capable of doing at the best quality. And it is an amazing printer. It is a fantastic printer. But, and again, but, if you're not doing the large volume, if you're not doing it constantly, this printer is not for you. Don't waste your money on this printer. One of the things that I have found with this printer is compared to all my other printers, this one has the biggest problem with head clogs if it's not used on a regular basis. My P800 back here, or the 3880 back here, I've had this thing for years, and if I get a head clog every six months, that's extreme, and I don't use that very often. The P800s over this way, I gotta get my cell phone looking at my own camera, which way is which. The P800s over here, if I have a head clog every month, that's extreme. It's usually maybe every two months. On this one here, if you leave it sit for any length of time, it's gonna get a head clog on it. It just, I don't see a way around it. So every day when I start it, I do a little nozzle check, put in five inch paper, put in six inch paper, do a nozzle check to make sure it's okay. If you use it on a regular basis, it works great. Now, what's one of the, or the two big advantages of this machine? Well, the first one I've already talked about, the ink, it uses bags of ink, not little cartridges of ink, and it reduces your price big time for ink. The second big thing with it is, you get your paper in rolls. This is how it comes on any lab that you get, whether it's from Naritsu or Fuji or whatever. You get rolls of paper, you put it in the machine. This one actually has spindles. You put the roll on it, you put it inside the machine, and it cuts it as you need it. It saves you having to get 500, 600 boxes of a thousand sheets each and drop them in. You can load this in and away you go. And it works great for that. But again, it's designed for volume. It's designed for pushing out stuff day after day. It's not designed to sit around and wait a week or two weeks till you use it again. Now, I've had people ask me, would this make a good event printer? Yes, a great event printer. But understand a couple things. First of all, it's got a head in it that moves back and forth. You need to secure that head when you're transporting it. You, it can't be bounced around. It's got ink in it. You can't leave it sitting in your vehicle to freeze, to get in the heat and melt. It has to be looked after. Plus, it's heavy. But boy, it can spit out the prints fast. As far as quality, I mentioned it several times. The quality is absolutely amazing with it. Anything else that I would recommend with it? If you're doing just one paper size, one paper type, you can go with the spindle that it comes with. You put the spindle on the roll, you put it in there and away you go. If you're doing multiple sizes of paper, so this you can actually use from Epson. They have uh, six inch, they have five inch, and they have eight inch. Six inches for your four by six, six by eights, five inches for your five by seven, three and a half by five. And then your eight inches for eight by 10, four by eights, eight by 12s, that type of size. If you're doing that, if you're changing that quite often, you can actually get an additional spindle 
that you can put on your paper, have it all ready to go so that you can pull out one, you can put the other one in, and there's no fooling around changing this constantly. If you're doing a high volume changing paper constantly, buy yourself the extra spindle. Right now, in Canada, the extra spindle is $150 plus minus. Again, depends who you buy through, but it's well worth it. Now, who would I recommend it for? The average photographer, don't even think about it. The photographer that's printing a good volume, don't even think about it. The photographer that's printing a high volume. You have a photo booth. You want to be able to print lots of pictures really fast. You sell pictures at a sporting event. You sell pictures at an art show or a craft show or a market. Or you have a photo lab. This is for you. If you're not doing these things, this machine is going to it's just not going to fulfill your needs and it's going to cause you a lot of headaches. So don't go with it if you don't have those needs. Is there anything else that I would recommend with this machine or to do to keep this machine running? Well, all I can say is do everything you can not to have to contact Epson. And if you contact Epson with a problem, have it thoroughly documented. Unlike so many other printers where there's thousands or tens of thousands out there, this printer is not going to be their best seller. This printer is not going to be the number one on their technician repair list to know how to fix it. So get all your facts straight before you call Epson and it'll make your life so much easier. So until next time, I hope that helps you. If you're looking for a printer that does great quality, fantastic quality, and does it at a low price and does a large volume of it, this is definitely a printer for you. If you need to do more than what this one does, more than 400 prints an hour, it's simple, buy two of them. The cost of buying one Naritsu Mini Lab, the lowest priced one, is around $50,000 Canadian starting price. This printer at $4,000 Canadian, you can buy 10 of them and still be further ahead than the one Naritsu, and likewise with Fuji as well. So until next time, have a great day. Get out there, take some amazing pictures, and hey, print them on whatever you have to print them on. We'll talk to you again. Bye-bye now.